In 2020, gamers around the world were looking at exactly one game and one game only. Cyberpunk 2077. A game that would put every other open world action RPG to shame, with a profound story that changes depending on what choices we as the players would make, all in a futuristic setting on a scale that has never been seen before. Those were the promises made by a game developing company that back then actually could afford to make these claims, CD Projekt Red. After all, those were the guys responsible for games like The Witcher 3. But instead, Cyberpunk 2077 had one of the worst launches in gaming history, became the laughing stock of the internet, and even resulted in a ruined reputation and multiple class action lawsuits against CD Projekt Red. For years, countless of updates and even an expansion to the game later, the reviews are mainly positive, Cyberpunk even receiving an award as best ongoing game, and CD Projekt Red celebrated 2023 as one of their best selling years since the release. But how exactly did we get here? In order to understand the downfall and eventually rise of Cyberpunk 2077, we need to start way back, 11 years ago in January 2013. This is when CD Projekt Red released their first teaser of the game. It was only a cinematic without any gameplay whatsoever, but people were hyped. And that got blue balled for six years straight. It wasn't until E3 in June 2018 that fans finally got to see more about the game. Two months later, in August 2018, followed then a very promising 48 minute long walkthrough video. The gameplay you're about to see is from a work-in-progress version of the game. Everything you see is potentially subject to change. Cyberpunk 2077 was supposed to be the magnum opus of CD Projekt Red. The game itself even features the most popular and well-liked celebrity within the internet culture. With probably the best reveal in gaming history ever. Wake the fuck up, samurai. We have a city to burn. And everyone, of course, knows the breathtaking meme. <laughs> You're breathtaking. You're all breathtaking. It's safe to say everyone was hyped and the release date wasn't too far off, being April 16, 2020. But before the release of Cyberpunk, CD Projekt Red uploaded an hour-long interview with its developers, giving fans even more intel on what they actually can expect in the game. For example, like how your life path or your background story that you can choose in the character creation screen would actually influence the whole game. You actually start off being a completely different person. Now, what is important with that is we actually take that through the whole game. Or different classes, like the techie that will use the flathead as sort of like a pet. And he is what we call a spider bot, a kind of very sophisticated piece of military hardware um, that the player will be able to use uh, when he chooses to, to you know, uh, invest into the techie playstyle. Well, the truth is, neither does the life path change anything about your story after the first 20 minutes of gameplay, nor do you even get the chance to get attached to the bot. You use that thing maybe 10 minutes in the prologue and then never hear, see or talk about the flathead ever again. But what is most baffling to me is how confident the developers spoke about gameplay mechanics half a year prior to the release of the game. Gameplay mechanics that don't exist four years after the release. Well, this confidence backfired almost immediately. The game got delayed. With CDPR stating that they want Cyberpunk 2077 to be their crowning achievement for this generation. Five months more time is what it takes. The new release date, September 17th, 2020. Then the marketing campaign for the game went crazy. Trailers, interviews, live action advertisements, merchandise, cyberpunk was dominating ads on the internet and to an extent even the real world. And with the release date creeping up on CD Projekt Red again, they came to the realization that September was too ambitious as well. Cyberpunk 2077 got delayed for a second time by two months to November 19th, 2020. But CDPR stated that the game is finished and now just needs polishing. And in order to keep the fans interested, CD Projekt Red uploaded more and more information about the game, with more developer interviews and behind the scenes footage, for example, feeding the ever growing anticipation and expectations of their players, always with the last words of encouraging them to pre order now. 
In October 2020, CDPR yet again delayed the game by 21 days, causing some radical fans to send death threats to the developers. The pressure was on, but CD Projekt Red just needed more time to playtest the game. Again, reassuring the fans that the game is ready, can be completed, and has all content in it. Well, we see about that. Finally, 8 years after the first reveal and 8 million pre-orders later, the world was presented with Cyberpunk 2077 on the 10th of December 2020. And my god, what a disaster it was. No place where we'll basically be like another. Yeah. Overnight, the most anticipated game, Cyberpunk 2077, became the laughing stock of the internet. The game was unplayable on 8th gen consoles. It was even so bad, Sony and Microsoft offered refunds, Sony even going as far as taking the game out of its store, and the stock market price of CD Projekt Red dropped more than 45% following the media outcry of how bad the game actually was. Investors even presented CD Projekt Red with multiple class action lawsuits. The game was making players physically sick, one even having an epileptic seizure. Cyberpunk 2077 probably had the worst launch you can imagine, aside from technical issues like constant crashes, deposing NPCs or game assets taking ages to load in, the game was also just not what it was promised to be. Or in cyberpunk lingo, the sitch got so bad that the co-founder of CD Projekt Red apologized publicly and promised change. I assure you that we'll do our best to regain your trust. CDPR presented the public with the roadmap of their plans to fix the game and their reputation, of course. Well, now it's been four years and the question still stands. Did CD Projekt Red redeem themselves? Is Cyberpunk 2077 now a good game? Maybe even the one we were promised? I wanted to be sure and played the game again. Cyberpunk 2077 starts you off with the decision of choosing your life path. A choice that, remember, was supposed to alter the core story of the game. And I have to say it again, no matter what life path you choose, after about 20 minutes of gameplay we all watch the exact same cutscene, end up at the exact same place in the game and play the exact same story. Yes, later on in the story you are presented with different dialogue options depending on the life path you chose, but to be fair, none of these options change the story whatsoever. Sometimes dialogue options in general even being completely ignored. There is a price on your head. I do you a favor now by not cutting it off and taking Sorry, it free. Sorry, but this is gonna take much longer. I do you a favor now. Also, some of those bugs that we witnessed at launch are still present to this day, like T-posing and game assets loading in. But those are very few and far between. They sadly break the immersion though, of what other than that is one of the best open world cities in gaming history. Night City is just plainly beautiful. You can easily get lost just walking around those streets, every nook and cranny having at least something to offer. Whether it's being random conversations between NPCs, loot, or even side missions. Is it the Night City we were promised though? Not really. You're never going to be in a situation where you're like, I need to get in there, I need to get in there, and then you go and you're like, oh, I can't get in there, because the city is so big, it's overwhelmingly huge. Yeah, I dare you to try that. The graphics are amazingly realistic, the attention to detail is crazy, and Night City came a long way from that Hello Asset collection it was at launch to what it is today. With the newly implemented NCAR transit system being an awesome addition to the game as well. I have spent over an hour in that thing just driving around Night City, having a look at everything, and just feeling how big the city actually is. So yeah, after everything loads in, the game looks awesome. Cyberpunk's story, on the other hand, is where CD Projekt Red, in my opinion, shines the brightest. Every single character is unique in not only their personality, but also morals, upcoming, and relationship towards you. It is rare that a game can make you feel something for a character that you've barely known for about an hour. And it's even rarer that a game can make me remember names, like Evelyn, Judy, Takamura, Victor, Jackie, Mommy. So much thought went into these characters and the backstories that you can't but just fall in love with at least some of them. 
CD Projekt Red managed to build a world with so many story elements, background information, and main characters that you genuinely feel and root for. The depth of some of these side missions? <laughs> Crazy. Every side geek is fundamentally different, every yellow exclamation point on the map being another story to discover. There's so much content to experience and I never felt like I was wasting my time deviating from the main plot. Which brings me to the main reason why I wanted to make this video in the first place. Cyberpunk is a great game, even if it's not entirely what was promised. Yes, game-altering decisions in Cyberpunk are nearly non-existent. Most of these decisions the player is presented with are no decisions at all. And yes, there are five different endings to the game depending on who you're siding with, but instead of this being a cause of multiple small decisions in your playthrough, it's basically decided in the last 5% of the game by whose storyline are you following. Which, by the way, shouldn't be an issue, but CD Projekt Red literally spent years planting this narrative that your choices matter in our heads. Every decision you make will have consequences. Your choices will shape how the world reacts to you and affect your relationships with those around you. But the story is still amazing. Every ending has its own bittersweetness to it and it is worth discovering or even replaying the game in its entirety. It's just sad that in the first few months or even years after the release of the game, no one even dared to try to talk about how great the story, the gameplay and the characters are just for the fact of the false promises CD Projekt Red made and the state of the game and missing content. A lot of the content that was promised back then to the players did eventually even get patched in, like the end card transit system I mentioned before, or that you can now buy real estate and even invite your love interest into your home for a date. Gameplay mechanics got reworked or polished, like the driving, vehicles entered horribly on launch. Now it's still not perfect, but Cyberpunk is no racing simulator for the majority of the time. And the AI combat system got reworked too. The NPCs are not as stiff and headless as they were before. And gameplay wise, Cyberpunk got better and better with every patch issued. The patches and bug fixes started to shift the general opinion about the game around 2022, especially after the release of Cyberpunk Edge Runners, the animation series in cooperation with the animation studio Trigger, which genuinely speaking is a very great show. It also exposed Cyberpunk to a whole new player base, and the new players had a totally different experience than those who played at launch, since the game wasn't as broken as it was. And so many balance and optimization patches later, CD Projekt Red showed to hardcore fans that they wanted to redeem themselves, but they weren't done yet. Almost exactly a year after the premiere of the show Edge Runners, CD Projekt Red released the expansion Cyberpunk 2077 Fandom Liberty in September 2023. Fandom Liberty is again featuring a celebrity as a protagonist, Idris Elba, who does an immaculate job in voicing and acting as Solomon Reed. The expansion seemingly connects into Night City by adding a new area. Dogtown, which is a more random part of Night City that, like the main game, looks nothing short of amazing. Phantom Liberty offers a different storyline, with four separate endings and adding a separate ending to the main story of V as well. At least 20 hours of gameplay, lots of side quests, and a new fan favorite character with fully fleshed out backstories. Phantom Liberty even changes the genre of the game depending on which choice you make, turning Cyberpunk from an action RPG to a horror game. Phantom Liberty, to say it short, is a masterpiece of a DLC, an amazing addition to Cyberpunk, and all of this happened while CD Projekt Red constantly added more and more gameplay, patches and bug fixes to the game as well. The devs really outdid themselves these last few years, even though there are still some issues even within Phantom Liberty. Cyberpunk 2077 had a very tough start. The game released in a broken state. It was unplayable on older platforms, resulting in a massive drop in company stock prices and a stained reputation for CDPR. Bugs still haunt the game to this day. Although not nearly as present as at launch, it is still noticeable. There are still performance issues that sadly break the immersion, and there is still content missing that was promised to us. And at this point, it is probably safe to say that we will never see it implemented. But Cyberpunk is one of the best games these past few years, even if it's not entirely due to a story that changes depending on what choices we make. It offers so much side content, not only with side quests, side storylines, gameplay mechanics, but also with 
itty bitty background stories that we can find via text and information that we really have to go out and look for. Night City is crafted with so much attention to detail and love. The story, characters, voice acting all fit so well in this dystopian world, making it very easy to get lost not only in the streets of Night City, but in the story the game wraps you in as well. The missing content may leave a bitter taste in your mouth. Yet, after all, you can't really miss what was never there, right? But it's not the biggest issue I personally have with this whole situation. The biggest issue I have with all of this, that this was not necessary. It wasn't necessary to lie about all of this stuff. Cyberpunk is one of the best games to this day. It wouldn't have needed these false promises to be a good game because it's already a good game. I know intentions with Cyberpunk were high. I know CDPR did bite off more than they could chew. I'm not exaggerating when I'm saying that Night City is easily the most complex thing that I or the others have worked on. But the launch of the game and especially the reputation of CDPR could have been saved by just being honest and transparent with its community, something that they've pledged after the fact. Almost four years later, the one promise CD Projekt Red did keep though is delivering a game that would give us players an awesome experience. If you're one of those people, like me, bought the game on release and said I'm gonna wait until they fix it and then I'm gonna play Cyberpunk, your time has come. If you haven't played Cyberpunk because you got deterred by the horrible news revolving its launch, try giving the game a shot now. And if you love playing single player games with awesome gameplay wrapped around a tight story and well written characters that will make you long for another playthrough even after beating it for the fourth time, go ahead. Cyberpunk 2077 may not entirely be the game we were promised to get in December 2020, but Cyberpunk is definitely an awesome game nevertheless. The game and CD Projekt Red deserve its success, and rightfully so, already plan the next installment in its universe. The only thing that we as a player can hope for is that CD Projekt Red this time stays true to its promise and history for once doesn't repeat itself. Bye.